Hello, everyone. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I'm Dr. John Burris. I am an associate professor at Southeastern Louisiana University. And uh, the videos that you're about to see were created as part of an introduction to Python course uh, that was created for friends and family. Uh, I'm glad that anybody can view this on YouTube. Uh, there are some additional materials that are available. Feel free to reach out to me at jburris at southeastern.edu if you would like to request these materials. Uh, so let's get right to it. Uh, we are going to be covering the very basics of programming today. And, and it's not going to be that we're going to be doing a lot of, of programming in, in the early section. So we're going to really do some background work. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, as I said, I'm John Burris. Uh, I'll be instructing the course. Uh, we'll be using Google Classrooms for all of our materials. And we're going to be covering Python. But uh, for this class, I want to start at the very beginning. And in this class, there is no prerequisite knowledge. They're really, besides maybe the English language, we're really good to go. And we'll talk about that together. And we want to get through uh, the main materials on how to program from the beginning. All of you know why you're here. So with just that, whether or not it's just to update your knowledge, to be a little bit more aware of what computer science or coding is, or if you're trying to you know, get ready for college or high school, uh, I'm hoping this this is all that you really need is a drive to be here. No purpose at knowledge. So let's start at square one. What is a computer? Well, that can be complicated. But I choose to use von Neumann's architecture as the description of what a computer is. If you look at this diagram that's on your screen, there are five sort of primary components that are displayed. And the green squares across the top are the sort of classifications of, of components of a computer. And there's one that's the most important, the CPU, or central processing unit. This is the brain of a computer. It's where the math gets done. And it, it takes zeros and ones and adds them together and shifts them left and right. And through all this really advanced math and <coughs> computing theory, it makes programs operate. The second is memory, which can include things like RAM, where you use temporary storage, where when you turn off the computer, it just goes away, or it can include hard drives, where you have more permanent storage, or even optical drives like CDs or DVDs. Then you have this input square that can be everything from a mouse to a keyboard to a microphone, video camera, whatever it is that brings data into a machine, and then output. So output can be things like printers, a monitor, speakers, right? Anything that a, can go can be a product of what the computer is doing. And the, the secret of a computer is that these components are all sort of independent. They're only connected by a single bus. And a bus means like a channel of communication, right? So there's a single channel of communication called a bus that connects all of these separate components, components together to where together they act like what we think of as a computer. But there's one thing that you need to know about computers, all right? Computers are dumb, like really, really, really dumb. Like I cannot express to you how dumb computers are. Even when we think of things like machine learning and AI, you have to understand that the machine itself is incredibly dumb. It doesn't know how to do anything. What we do in this class and in computer science is we sort of make computers do the things that we want them to do. And that can be pretty hard. In fact, the entire field of computer science is really built on that, making these very simplistic machines do what it is that we want them to do. <clears throat> so why do they appear so smart? Because that may have surprised many of you that, yes, you're much more intelligent than a computer. Well, what makes them appear smarter are programs, right? So programs are software or just sets of instructions that tell a computer what to do. But the problem is they have to tell the computer exactly what to do. I mean, at a very, very fine grain of detail and without any mistakes, what to do. And, and it's not as easy as, you know, maybe the visualization on the, the right side of your screen where it's a Lego set and here's how you build this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. But almost like that, if you put one piece out of place, it can cascade. So programs have to be very uh, well written. And so that's why this isn't an easy field. It's because the computers aren't smart enough to help us, right? So while I can teach you and make loads of mistakes while I do so, and you'll still get it, it's because you 
or intelligent. But the computer is dumb. So programming and creating this software, creating the, the programs, we're, we're, we're doing these detailed instructions for computers where they can't tell if we're telling them something wrong. So it's really on us. So how do we tell them? How do we give them the instruction sets? Well, there are sort of these three levels of, of language, right? The language in which we convey these instructions. And at the lowest level is binary, or really the, the word for it is machine code. And this is the, the language that the processor itself, the CPU, reads in. It's 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, all that stuff, right? Now, what does this mean when we translate it to something like English? I don't know. I can't read this. I can't code in this. It's kind of beyond us. But that's the language that a computer speaks. So to be clear, what the implication of this is, is that since a, a computer speaks binary, speaks machine language or machine code, I can't communicate directly with the computer. I can't because I can't speak in zeros and ones. Nobody's that good. Nobody is that good. So what we do is we sort of increase, and in, in, to use a sort of a, a, a $3 word here, increase the level of, of abstraction, right? We try to take it from that machine language and we try to come up with a common, like a, a middle ground between my language, which is English, and the machine's language, which is machine code, right? So we, we come up somewhere in between. Well, one of the places that we get a little bit more like human speak or like English would be something called like an assembly language. But assembly language, I actually have a different phrase for that. I call it gobbledygook, right? Because it's just enough to look like maybe you understand what it is, but it's still so complex that you can't understand it. Look at this. Move EAX, B, EBX, add R1, R2. And I, I mean, I see words, move, add. And I see letters, R1, R2. It's just enough to kind of trigger, wait, that, that looks like a language, but I can't read it. So... When we try to tell these computers what to do, when we try to give them instructions, we can't speak in machine language. Assembly is somewhere in between. It's kind of what we would kind of call a chip level language, a little bit higher level. But things changed when a certain person came along. And that is Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. Now, she is so influential that I actually named my child, Grace Burris, after Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. This woman was an incredible scientist because one of the things that she did is she devised the, the concept of machine independent language. And this is a much higher level of instruction. And, and I'm not going to say that you can now speak to computers in English, but you can speak to them in English-ish, like kind of English, right? And so that's really what came out of it. Look at this, this little snippet of code in the middle of your screen int x equals 5. If x is greater than 5, well, it says system.out.println above 5 else exit. Now, the thing about it is, that is Java code, and that is programming. And we may not understand what all of those words mean, such as int. I don't exactly know what int means. I don't know what the, the equal sign really does there. Is it comparing two things? But if I put it together and I start thinking about it, all of a sudden, you can understand conceptually what that snippet of code does. There's something called X, and X seems to be the same thing as 5. And if X is greater than 5, it's going to print out above 5. Otherwise, it's going to exit. But X is not greater than 5, so I'm just going to exit. You know, that's actually some pretty con – that's, 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 like that's like the third lecture for this class. But you kind of get it, right? It's English-ish. So it gives us a, a little bit closer to human language – a way to give instructions to the computer on what to do. And this is incredible. So what do computers speak, right? Computers still run using machine code, all right? We use high-level languages to do English-ish instruction sets. And then there's a special type of program called a compiler, or for Java, it's actually called an interpreter that translate the English-ish code over to the zeros and ones, right? From high-level language all the way down to binary language. Now, I have a question for you. Why do you think we have all of these different levels, the English-ish and the assembly and the machine code?
So after thinking about it, I guess I've kind of told you the answer that, that it's about being able to give the instructions in a common language, right? So we need something in between English and zeros and ones. And these high-level languages let us do that. But an interpreter gets it lower and lower and closer to the zeros and ones. So it facilitates us having somewhere in the middle of the ground. The question that's not on the slides, why don't we just speak to, to, to our computers in English? Why can't they understand English? Well, I think any of us that use Siri will probably understand, right? You try to ask Siri a question and, and she'll tell you something really bananas and, and doesn't quite understand. I don't get that. Here's what I found on the web, right? And so really English is too ambiguous. It's not clear enough. It's not detailed enough for the dumb computer to understand what to do. So that's what we're, we're going to learn a high level language in this class. The high level language that we're going to learn is called Python. Right. And Python is really cool. It's a uh, general purpose, like Grace Hopper said, it's high level, like Grace Hopper wanted. And there's another this thing that I will understand by the end of the class a little bit, but it's called object oriented. So it's really got all of the big things that make a programming language great. But it's also extremely popular, especially in STEM fields, engineering, scientists, statistics, anything with machine learning is generally done with Python. However, it also has some things like analytics for the business folks out there, like CPAs, anybody doing uh, statistical analysis, anybody that's going to be in marketing, right? There's going to be a lot of relevance there for the analytics side. But it's also used in things like web programming, or what we call like back-end web programming, where you're using a website and all the logic and processing, besides just the pretty pictures, some of that stuff is also done in Python as well. But a bonus for this class is that Python is pretty easy. Uh, it's known for its readability. It uses something called indentations uh, for syntax. So, uh, and I'll have to describe what those words mean later. But it uses indentations to kind of cleanly show what code should do. And I found this out because of this class. I've been coding Python for years, and I assumed that it was related to the snake. I was wrong. It was actually built on Monty Python. So uh, it, was, it was inspired by Monty Python. So I thought that was really cool to understand. So for this class, one of the big things that I want to do, one of the big things that I want to do for those of you that want to learn what it is that I do, but also like the core concepts of programming, there's going to be kind of two levels that are going to go on here. And we're going to be showing things done in the very easy way. Uh, when you go onto your Google Classroom and you download these PowerPoints, there's going to be this link here. And I believe I can also put it to the material in the, the PowerPoint. There's going to be this link here for repel it dot com language python 3 and what this does is it's going to open up inside of a web browser a python interpreter and this python interpreter it prevents us from having to install stuff you can do it on on any sort of device you can even do this on an ipad totally okay whatever you want to use for this class you totally can because this kind of emulates or, 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 or looks like a, a something you would install on your computer. But with this class, there's always going to be a second level, okay? I'm going to call it the Super Geek stuff, okay? Uh, for Super Geek challenges, you can go further. Now, if, if you are actually going to use this in a classroom or a business environment, you're actually going to use True Python, not something like on a web page that, that looks like Python. You're going to use True Python. So I want you to, if you're wanting to go the Super Geek route, which, which I don't recommend for everybody, if you want to go Super Geek, Go to python.org downloads and download Python 3, Python 3, uh, and probably they'll, they'll have a couple of links, do, do a stable build, I think it's 3.9 something. Uh, download that, and then also download something called the Idle IDE, which is an integrated development environment, which if you think of like Microsoft Word is the way you edit Word files, Idle, or the IDE, is the way that you edit code files. So go ahead and download that idle uh, um, program as well. Here are the two links. And once again, that's only for the super geeks that want to do that. All right, so uh, definitely check it out if you want to. So I think we're ready for this. All right, here's what I want you to do. Right now, open up 
in another window or you can hit pause if you need to in a minute. I want you to open up that link, repellit.com slash languages slash Python 3. And when it opens up on the left hand side of your screen will be a place where you can edit some Python code. And on the right hand side is going to be all of where you're going to eventually see output. OK, so it should automatically fill that editor side with the line print, open parentheses, then an apostrophe, and it's going to say hello world. I want you to change that print statement to say hello world, exclamation point, then add on to it, it's me, and then put your name there. When you click that run button in the middle, I need you to know something. If in the right hand side of that screen, it says, hello world, it's me, John, then congratulations. You have written your first program, and it's going to be the first step for some of you into a long career in, in writing code. But uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. You've written your first computer science, your, your first computer program, your first software. Now, sure, it's running on a web page, but believe me, it works just as well if you're working on a local computer. All right. So where do we go from here? We are now all officially programmers. We have made a Python application that printed Hello World. And hey, let me tell you, every computer scientist in the world, their first application, their first program was Hello World. It doesn't matter if they're at MIT or, or, or somewhere like Cambridge, right? That's your first application is Hello World. So you've done it. You've taken that first step with me. So where do we go from here? Where we're going to see more and more things lumped onto this, okay? Right now we can print a sentence. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start adding things called variables. Then we're going to do things like related to math, very simple math, but related to math. And then we're going to start building out some, some control in it so that we can make computers take one path or another based on things like user input. But the thing that you have to know about computer science and code and Python and everything is that it's, it's by its very nature comprehensive. So everything that you learn in topic one is going to be important for topic two. Everything for topic one and two is going to be important for topic three. It's almost like learning basic vocabularies in a language, right? The more advanced you get in the language, you still have to know all the basic stuff. All right. So it's a lot like that. Now, you do need to know there are going to be exams. There's going to be quizzes. There's going to be programming assignments at every single topic. We're going to have these things. But, hey, those grades are between me, you, God, and any federal government that has a authority that has a warrant. Okay? Because I ain't, ain't going to stand up to that now. All right? If they come at me, then they're going to get it. All right? So just those grades are going to be between you and I. I'll see them, but I won't be checking them. Uh, but they're really for you to make sure that you understand from an assessment level how you're doing, how well you're doing. And at the beginning ones are all just so you can see what a quiz looks like. It's not very important. Now, one thing is, is that you're going to have to code in this class. You're going to have to write code because it's a little bit like sports. You got to practice. You got to do it. Otherwise, just learning the concepts, you won't be versed in. You won't, you won't be able to create. You have to practice, okay? So this isn't like a, an option, right? If you're going to follow along in this class, you've got to commit to doing these homework assignments. Every single homework assignment is going to have two levels. It's going to have, here's what you do to get your job done and get the assignment done. And then there's going to be a super geek level. And a super geek level is going to push you a little bit further, okay? So with all of these assignments, I don't expect everybody to do super geek, but I do expect you to finish these, all right? Here's my overarching, like, huge thing, though, okay? Computer science isn't for everyone. For every student that comes into a program in computer science or information technology, they have about a 50% chance of not making it to the sophomore year in computer science or information technology. The reason why is because it's tough. There's a couple of reasons why. Okay, so, so like English 4 in high school is a lot like English 1 in college. And, and that for that reason, there's this like smooth transition. And this is brand new stuff. But the other thing is that it's, everything is like a little puzzle. Everything's a, like when something breaks, you don't know why. And you can't just sit there and go, hey, hey, Dr. Burris, come, come, come here. I, I got to fix it for me. I can't. I can't. And the reason I can't is because you won't learn from it. Right. So it's challenging, very, very challenging at times to figure out what's wrong. But it's 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 
fun. It, you just have to find the fun. And that gets me to the mantra. The, my, my whole career is built off of these two sentences. And this is a picture of me at, with the actual sign that was printed of my mantra. And that is to, to solve problems in engineering, science, technology, mathematics. I would argue in any field, there are two important steps that are critical to success. And the first is that you understand the problem. Now, that is not straightforward. You have to understand what it says. And you have to take time reading the question. But in that is built in all the prerequisite knowledge. I need to know what it's asking for, and I need to know what in my noggin I need to solve that, right? And the second is to enjoy the solution process. And that's that's actually pretty easy, to be honest with you. Because we we love little things like, like these bolts and how do you – this is like a little puzzler, right? How do you, how do you un, undo the bolts? And, and there's different bolts that have different puzzles in them. And, and I love these things and Rubik's Cubes and, and Sudokus and every single one of these little puzzles that we have, we find enjoyment in trying to solve them. You have to find that enjoyment. Okay? You have to in order to succeed. It's not that, that everything in computer science is amazing, but what it does mean is that it does mean that you'll be more successful if you can see each one of these just like you would a Sudoku, looking for that enjoyment inside of it. All right. So with that, we're kind of ready to get going. All right. So I've posted the first quiz. And I will be posting the first homework assignment. Probably by the time you see this, it will be up as well. Uh, and I want you to go through this like preliminary setups. Reach out to me if you need any help installing Python. I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, I really want to encourage you to take this class seriously, even though there's no grading or anything like that. It is a core skill for a lot of people. And I am so happy that you want to look into this skill. All right? But try to stay motivated. Try to stay focused on it. Uh, my email address is jburris at southeastern.edu. Even for people that find this material on YouTube, I'm happy if you want to reach out, and, um, and I'll, I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. Um, one real quick thing, you can use Google. Don't use Google in the way of, oh, well, you know, find the answer for this program in your summit. No, 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 don't do that. Uh, well, you, but maybe, okay, how do you get Python to print out on the next line? That's a good Google. So go ahead and try that stuff if you need to. With that, I'm going to sign off for the first topic. I'm looking forward to the, the class ahead. Bye-bye.